What is up guys, Lena Ray here. I have a quick little story. I guess, well, this is just a quick little vlog, just uh, an experience. This is actually part two to the video that you just watched, right, the video before. Um, I just got put in a very weird situation. at all and I I mean I literally ran I mean I didn't run but I power walked out of this situation so I went to a patient's house this morning uh, we had a, a scheduled appointment and you know I knocked on the door I rung the doorbell the dogs are barking I'm waiting there for about three or three or four minutes I'm literally waiting there I know people are in the house because there's a car sitting out in front so I'm just waiting there and um, I see uh, I see something through the little window and I'm like, oh, there's a person coming. And this little girl opened the door. This little girl was probably uh, six years old. She opened the door. She says, come on in. And, you know, it's it's early in the morning. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe grandpa is, um, you know, maybe grandpa told her to open the door because I'm, I'm there to see her grandfather. Maybe grandpa's uh, in there. Maybe he's just getting dressed. He told her to open the door because he knows I'm coming. I walk in the house and uh, she closes the door behind me and she's like, he's not here. And I I kind of I kind of freak out a little bit. I'm like, um, he's not here. And she's like, no, he's not here. And again, remember, she's six years old. And I was like, oh, is anyone here? And uh, she's like, yeah, my mommy and daddy are downstairs watching TV. And I was like, okay, I got to go. <laughs> like, it was, it, was, it was very quick. I was like, no, I, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. So anyways, I, um, I immediately, I was like, I, I, you know, by then she had walked away from the door. I, I meet, made a beeline straight back to the door, uh, opened the door and walked outside and, and, and at that point I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll come back. And um, so I walked out of the door and so anyways, I just found that it was just a very odd situation for me. Like I don't, very, very odd situation for me. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, the, the whole kid thing, like that's, that's, that's a, that's a zone you don't really want to play with and me being, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, you know, I don't know. You know, me being the the big, me being the the you know the tall black guy. You know, I don't. You know, I'm I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Me, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a little bit, um, uh, being a little weird here and just over cautious, overly cautious. But uh, me being the big tall black guy, you know, and uh, you know, you know in a, a neighborhood that's not mine with a little five or six year old girl answering the phone and she's the only one on the level you know it's me and this me and this person me and this little girl nah I don't play that and so I just I, I immediately got out of the house and I just felt very uncomfortable like it was one of the one of the first times I felt this uncomfortable since I've been in anyone's house and I've been into hundreds of people's houses um, also I have a uh, well yeah I do have a funny story so I walked into this one person's house one day and um, uh, this person, you know, let me in, you know, they really, it was a really nice neighborhood and I walked in and there was a freaking massive cat in their house. This cat was probably about, you can't see my other hand, but if, it was probably about this tall. So, you know, obviously that way it was huge. Um, I saw the cat, I immediately stopped in my tracks and I backed up out of the house. And I'm like, you know, I, <laughs> you know, I'm not a cat guy. I've always been a dog guy. Even growing up, we hated cats because the cats would, you know, would, would sometimes fight our dogs and scratch our dogs. And we just, we just didn't like cats growing up. And so I've never been a cat person. And so I, again, I, I, I immediately backed up, kind of backed up out of the house and the, the owners were like, it's okay she's nice and so anyways i walked into the house i ended up doing the treatment with the patient and uh, the patient was just telling me she's like the other dogs in the neighborhood are just as scared of her they will run away from her she has fought most of the dogs in the neighborhood that's why they keep her in the house now but she's fought most of the dogs 
and she has won every single bout. The dog has always left um, with just just mangled. And so so that's my funny story. Oh, the name of the cat was a Bengal. I'd never seen a Bengal before. These are freaking house cats. Apparently they were wild animals. At, you know, they are wild animals, but uh, people domesticate them or something. And so now they are house cats. I don't freaking know. But uh, it was massive and very freaking scary. <laughs> so, all right, quick voiceover. So I found pictures of a Bengal online. Look at this. This is unnecessary. These things should be banned. And look at the little kid in the back, cowering in fear back there. But yeah, but going back to the first story again, you know, very, very uncomfortable situation. So there are times uh, in my job where I have felt pretty uncomfortable, but this definitely was the worst. Like, um, I have actually, I mean, I won't get into this, but I've been into to homes where I know for a fact people were racist, right? Uh, you know, and, you know, they got the, not saying everyone who has a Confederate flag is racist, but, um, but I know for a fact, you know, there were people that were, right? These people were. Um, you know, and I've, you know, being in my job, it's crazy because you have to work with a lot of people. I've worked with people who have swastikas tattooed on their, on their, on their, um, on their necks. They've got Arab Brotherhood stuff tattooed on their necks. I mean, they've got, you know, um, um, you know, I won't go through all the tattoos, but they've had some pretty racist stuff tattooed on them. And, um, and so, so this isn't anything about the Confederate flag or anything, but these people 100% power and stuff like that tattooed on. So I've worked with lots of people and it's kind of interesting because when people are in need, they can be different, right? Which is, which I find kind of cool, right? And sometimes people are just, you know, uh, products of their, of their, their environment right or just uh yeah they're just products of their environment and but uh but not everyone who has all those tattoos is actually a racist which is for which i found interesting i actually work with one dude um he actually went to prison and uh he was i think he actually had a girlfriend who was black he was a white guy but um but he had you know power tattoos and brotherhood tattoos and you know the Viking tattoos and all you know all the racist tattoos, but uh, but his his thing was is that he had to do that in order to get by in prison. I thought I should also add this. I'm not saying what he did was the right thing to do, but he did what he felt was the right thing to do in order to survive in the situation he was in. So he had to join the organization. He had to do you know the dirty work in order to stay alive in prison and uh, but he says he has no problem with other people he just you know he just went to prison he had a had a bad situation he went to prison and uh, he had to do that in order to not be taken advantage of by other individuals and so that's what he did which is which I find kind of interesting but I mean he's like I mean like full sleeves full sleeves neck and everything it's just what he had to do so kind of interesting so anyway those are my two stories <laughs> for today uh thanks for watching like subscribe comment share and i will talk to you guys later peace